So what I thought I'd do first of all, before I can move on to the next bit, which is about integrity, is to mention something about virtual devices. Um, I've put off mentioning them until now because we're going to get a little bit deeper into um, some of the uh, sort of ways that um, pools and data sets are, are manipulated. So I thought it'd be a good idea to mention about VDEVs, virtual devices. So ZFS has this concept of um, the only thing that makes up a pool is a virtual device. Now I know that contradicts what I've already shown you and told you that you know we've created I create a Z pool called test from the SDB disk. In fact, let me just check off and don't think I've removed my SDA, have I? No. Um, so test slash dev slash SDB, for example, or just SDB. And as you know, SDB is a disk on the system. You see me, you see me in previous videos do F disk on SDB. So you know it's a physical disk. Um, while that's true, that it's a, it's actually a block device. From ZFS's point of view, that block device is referred to as a VDEF, and that is because when we do status, although it's got SDB there, anything that is subordinate to the pool, so test has got a higher indentation than. SDB has anything that's subordinate, immediately subordinate, is a VDEV. And when we come to RAIDs and mirrors later on, you'll see that the actual RAID or the actual mirror becomes the VDEV because it is the next level down from the pool. And then the block devices are not VDEVs anymore, they're actually constituent parts of the um, VDEV itself. So Again, this might not be very clear at the moment, but it will become more clear as as we move on. I'll, I'll come back and mention and point these things out. But the rule is, and you'll see all sorts of things about people saying, oh, a VDEV is not a disk, or it can only be a block device, and all sorts of things that people put on the internet. The simple way to know what a VDEV is, is that the first indentation, when you do a Z-pool status, under the Z pool name is a VDEV. Anything else is not a VDEV. So if I had SDB, SDC, SDD, and so on, under this column at the same level, they're all VDEVs. If they're at a different level for any whatever reason, they're not VDEVs. It's only this first hierarchy, like the first children, the first level of subordinates under the pool that is a VDEV. And because we're adding a basic disk, a basic block device, that physical device is also a VDEV. And that's why SDB here, although it's a physical device, a physical block device, it's also known as a VDEV. In other situations, it isn't a VDEV. But again, that will become more clear. And again, as we move on, I will point out when when this structure looks a little bit different than it does now, I'll point out um, the differences. It will be clearer. But I thought it best to mention it now so that as we come up to seeing these different structures that I'll be creating, that it will make a little bit more sense. So at the moment, if anybody asks you an example like this, you can say SDB is a VDEV. And if they say it's a block device, you'll say, yep, that's right, it's a block device as well. But in the current configuration, as I've got on the screen here, SDB is a VDEV and a block device. Not always going to be the case, but at, at the moment, the configuration, it is a VDEV. Um, another important thing to mention about VDEVs is that... Um, you can have multiple VDEVs in a in a pool, and just one failure out of all those VDEVs, any one VDEV fails, then the whole pool is failed, and you lose all the information 
in the pool. Uh, it sounds quite frightening, but the way around this is that you make the VDEVs redundant. So it's not the pools that are redundant, it's the VDEVs that are made redundant through using RAID or mirrors. But it's still important to remember that the VDEVs, there is no redundancy. Or, or rather, sorry, let me rephrase that. The pool level, there is no redundancy. The, the, the redundancy goes with the pools. So that means, sorry, not the pools. The redundancy goes with the VDEVs. So that means if one VDEV, which can, can constitute several block devices or s several um, disks, if you like, if one of those VDEVs fails in any way, the whole pool has failed. So it, it, like I say, it sounds critical, but when we come to configure um, pools out of more complex setups, we'll see that it can be the uh, this problem can be mitigated. Um, yeah, so just to reiterate that the redundancy that we will be coming across is not at the pool level, so it's not at this level. It's what constitutes a VDEV that makes um, uh, is where the redundancy is. So obviously in this basic setup where we've only got one disk, you can see straight away there's one VDEV. If that failed, the whole pool has failed. Simple. So I'll point this out as we go on. I'll point out the VDEVs and I'll point out the points of failure as well on, on different configurations that I'll create. Um, there's various ways you can lay out VDEVs and certain configurations may be efficient in terms of speed or they may be um, more uh, have more integrity and therefore safer as far as data is concerned um, and that's something you need to experiment with or decide upon when you create your your pools when you when you dimension them if you like with your set of disks do you want speed um, a lot of people recommend mirrors these days to create data sets um, that give the advantage of speed, uh, various other advantages for rebuilding and so on. Or do you want RAID devices where there's a can be a little bit more integrity, a little bit more reliability. So it's a balancing act, what, what is important to you most of all.